America is being tested. Its leadership, directly or indirectly, being tested on multiple fronts. These are major societal forces that are at work. It's about challenges to uh, the economic space, to the physical space, to the security space. And overall, America standing in the world. And that's where uh, this election is going to be very interesting and one, and maybe one of the few that is uh, decided at some level around national security issues. I'm concerned about our national security in the world. I'm worried about two wars. So I'm really hoping for a change. Basically, since the 1970s, between 60 and 70 percent of Americans think that the U.S. should take an active role in world affairs. There is support, generally large support, in fact, among the American people for America kind of taking that leadership role um, around the world. Between the end of the war in Afghanistan, the start of the war in Ukraine, the Hamas-Israel war, and the kind of global and geopolitical war that we've been in for some time with other actors who wish us harm, or whether they be Chinese or Russian or North Korean, these are so many hotspots that cut in really interesting ways. Actually, in the early 2010s, you actually saw more Democrats start to say that the U.S. should take an active role in world affairs than Republicans. And in fact, the number of Republicans who are saying that has fallen below 50 percent, and that is an all-time low. There isn't a Democratic foreign policy and a Republican foreign policy uh, any longer. And it's not because of the old mantra that says that politics uh, stops at the water's edge. It's because both parties have true divisions inside of them about what the appropriate role for America in the world is. Yeah, I, I tend to trust Biden more on foreign policy. I mean, Trump, it's interesting to reflect on, like, there weren't as many of these large-scale conflicts going on under his presidency. I think these foreign wars are one thing, that, you know, Trump does not want to get us involved where we don't need to be. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. Obviously, George W. Bush, one of the bigger Republican advocates for an active U.S. presence in the world, he left the presidency not in great shape. The Iraq War was unpopular. There was also an economic crisis. But generally speaking, that kind of version of Republicanism was discredited. And it's been replaced by Trumpism, which is more populist. Big countries stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bills. Right now, Republicans are trying to figure out where they stand because the MAGA movement, former President Trump, frankly, smashed a lot of the expectations around foreign policy. Americans did not like the way that the exit from Afghanistan was handled, and in fact, it was the precipitating event that made Joe Biden unpopular. The Biden administration is pushing back on a new poll that shows the president's approval rating at an all-time low. And he's in a lot of ways never recovered politically to the same degree to get back to the numbers he had before. Yes, foreign policy is more polarized than it has been in the past, but relative to other issues, I think it's important to note that um, the divide, the partisan divides aren't super strong on foreign policy. Republicans like to portray themselves as being like very, very anti-China and Democrats as being soft on China. But among voters, actually, there really isn't much of a divide. Uh, according to the Pew Research Center, 88% uh, of Republicans have an unfavorable view of China, but also 81% of Democrats have an unfavorable view. So Americans across the board pretty much agree uh, that they are uh, an enemy. More than 90% of both Democrats and Republicans view Russia unfavorably. So there is general agreement among the electorate, uh, regardless of party, about kind of who our enemies are. That said, it doesn't mean that policy isn't polarized by parties. Republicans are deeply divided on questions around foreign funding generally, uh, and particularly the war in Ukraine. There's a growing sentiment uh, inside the Republican Party that is bucking decades of tradition. 77% of Democrats keep supporting aid to Ukraine, but it's down to only 50% of Republicans who are supporting it. And of course, that reflects this divide in Congress where Democrats are, have been advocating to keep aiding Ukraine, whereas Republicans are saying, actually, we should cut it off. President Biden and the Democrats have to worry about divisions in their own ranks. President Biden has had tense relationships with the current Israeli government, but he hasn't gone nearly as far as a lot of people have urged him inside his own party in cutting off 
off the Israelis or showing any slights to their prime minister. The crisis in Israel does more to unite the Republican Party than the Democratic Party. The Democrats, who have long had strains inside their own party, that have questioned the way that the Israelis have handled Gaza and, and the West Bank. So I think for the perceptions of this president, particularly as a president for whom there are concerns around his age and ability to do the job, being dialed in, being on the right side of these major historical events is very important. One of the things about foreign policy is you're always looking forward. A lot of people will complain about mistakes of the past, will say that this was handled rightly or wrongly, but you, you can't put things back in that bottle once it's out. And you have to deal with the reality and a changing reality going forward. And foreign policy, national security world, you can be confronted and will continue to be confronted by things that are just um, outright uh, unexpected.